yesterday, I had the pleasure of commentating on the GG Poker stream over Doug Polk and Daniel Negreanu's Heads Up match. If you all enjoyed that, check it out. Like it in the comments. Let them know that you enjoyed me. If you didn't like it or you didn't enjoy me, uh, don't tell them. <laughs> oh, it's early. We commentated pretty late. I'd say it up till about 1 a.m. Had to wake up with the kids at about 6 a.m. or so. So, you know, you know, you know. Kind of tired today. So, we're going to have an Ask Me Anything. We're going to make it nice and easy. You all ask me whatever you want to ask me, and I will talk about it. It also occurred to me I did not do a little coffee on Wednesday. I'm not sure if I told you all of that, told all of you that on Twitter. Um, <laughs> it was actually a mistake on my end because I was supposed to have to take care of James's school on Wednesday because they were uh, having school from home because one of their teachers got COVID. But then they let the kids back in on Wednesday and I had on my schedule, it was blocked out 9 a.m. till noon that I had to take care of James. And um, then I forgot. I woke up, I'm like, oh, sweet. I don't have to do anything from 9 till 12. So I thought it was the wrong day or something. I don't know. My bad. We weren't here on Wednesday. This show is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern time. I've been off of coffee for a while. I had some coffee yesterday for the first time in, I don't know, two weeks or so. Today we have a giant bowl of matcha tea. This probably has more caffeine than the coffee, for all I know, so that's fine. You signed up for premium. Does the tournament class apply to cash games? So the tournament class is generally built with the idea, at least for the post-flop sections, that you're playing 40-ish big blinds or shallower. And for the most part, it does apply when you're playing deeper stacked. But there are some differences, and a lot of those differences are discussed in the Cash Game Masterclass. So check that out if you have not. Um, I realize the Cash Game Masterclass is not nearly as in-depth as the tournament class. That's because we're continuously getting better. So... We are going to um, re be remaking the tournament class, kind of similar to the... I'm sorry, we're going to be remaking the cash game class similar to the tournament class at some point in the near future. If you want to check out PokerCoaching.com, so check out PokerCoaching.com slash free. When's my next live stream? We're doing it right now. We're literally streaming right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. You need staking for a tournament. Well, it turns out the people who deserve to be staked because they have good results, often don't have a problem getting staking. So if you want to get staked, get really good results, and then you can go to pretty much any backing company out there. I'm an advisor for the Pokar backing company, P-O-C-A-R-R.com. Check it out. If you are a good, strong poker player, they will probably back you. If you're a bad poker player, they absolutely will not. Yesterday on the stream, we opened one of these um, gigantic packs of cards. Back here we have uh, some poker cards. We opened these on a little coffee the other day, as you see. These are from 2006. People like Dale Negreanu, Hoyt Corkins, TJ Cloutier. Anyway, we opened all of these the other day on a little coffee. And then yesterday, on the GG Poker stream, we opened... One of these. This, I didn't quite realize what this was. There's one card in this pack. One. And it costs $12. You say, what? Let me show you what we opened yesterday. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? This is a Jennifer Harmon and Kathy Liebert double-signed poker card. It came in this case and everything. How fancy. See this Instagram? <laughs> and it was fun opening this. I thought there must be like five cards in this giant pack, but it's only one. You all want to open one now? I don't know. Let me know in the chat. If you want to open another one, we'll open another one. I actually thought these were super cool. Pack costs 70 bucks. Our box costs $70. Five comes in a box. That makes these worth what? 13 bucks a piece? If you want to open another one, we'll open another one. We'll see what we get. What's a proper bankroll to play 25 no limit and $30 tournaments? Check out pokercoaching.com slash bankroll. One of the biggest mistakes most people make from the small blind, they fold too often whenever it folds to them, and they play too often when someone raises in front of them. They do everything wrong. 
Do I think Negron has been running poorly in the match, or do I think he has been playing poorly? Um, well, look, Doug Polk plays great, right? He's a very strong world-class heads-up player. And Negranu is almost certainly worse than the absolute best heads-up players because he has little to no experience, right? So he's probably outclassed a little bit in terms of skill, but he's clearly running quite poorly as well. And um, he's running pretty bad. <laughs> Yesterday, Doug Polk made seven trips in a 30-minute period. Think about that. Playing one-on-one, -on -one, heads up, Texas style. <laughs> you, make it, you run into trips back to back to back to back. There's another hand where he four bet the ace queen. Polk called with king 10 suited. It comes queen, queen, six. It's pretty good. Two hearts. Negrano has the ace of hearts. He ends up losing to king 10 of hearts in a four bet pot. It's pretty unlucky. Very next hand. He had pocket aces all in pre-fault, loses to kings. Like, it's a pretty bad run, right? So whenever you are perhaps a little bit outclassed by your opponent and you are running like poo, you're going to lose. Did I order these cards online? Yes, I ordered them on eBay. Let's see. Do you have any fun ship at Holabala stories I can share? Um, yes, but I'm not going to. There's a book called Here Comes the Ship at Holabalas. I think that's what it's called. Check it out on YouTube. There's a whole 300-page book, or however long it is, about us and our stories. Mainly about Andrew Roble and Dave Benefield. All right, you want me to open a pack of cards? All right, well, there's only one card in this gigantic pack, okay? What are we going to get? What do you think? Do you have predictions for who we're going to get? This is from 2007. All I know is that Phil Helmuth and Daniel Negreanu must have cards in here because their faces are on the packs of cards. We also know there must be Jennifer Harmon and Kathy Liebert cards in there because I have one. Who do you think we're going to get? Get your thoughts in the chat box. You won the big 55 with 12,000 players three weeks after you bought my book in 2011. Think of the value, huh? I think the is playing too many three out pots out of position. Now, I got to presume both players are playing roughly reasonable preflop ranges because that's the easiest part of Heads Up No Limit to solve to some extent. So I think, if anything, Negreanu's probably folding a little bit too much post-flop. Probably not getting quite enough value from his premium hands. Why are the Rays first in charts eight-handed, not nine or ten? Because nine-handed and ten-handed games are happening less and less, and also under-the-gun eight-handed is not all that much tighter than under-the-gun nine-handed. Russ Hamilton and Howard Letterer. Let's see if we get a Russ Hamilton or Howard Letterer card. Here we go. I'm just going to compare the backs of this. This was SS71. This one's SS3. I don't know what SS means. It says the name of the player on it. So I already spoiled it for me. Here we got today Todd Brunson, everyone. We have a Todd Brunson signed card. Look at that signature. Look at that signature. He wrote Todd A.A. A. Brunson. Todd A.A. A. Brunson. Let's see. What does it say on the back? So actually, I'm not a fan of the way they don't say anything on the back of these cards. The other cards from 2006 back there, they actually say a lot about the players. Here, they don't say much about Todd Brunson. I have not had all that many interactions with Todd Brunson, although he's always been pleasant to me. He has a, um, a restaurant in Las Vegas called Roma Deli. I've never been there, but I would like to go one day. Check it out. Check it out. Doyle Brunson's son, from what I understand, he learned how to play poker without the assistance of Doyle, which is kind of neat. Where's the book? I don't think it's in here. There's a book called, I think, The Godfather of Poker. It's a biography about Doyle's life. Does that sound right? I think that sounds right. Good Lord. People, people spam in my chat. Look, if you spam the chat, you get banned, okay? Block user on YouTube. All right, there you go. Um, I don't remember what they were asking. Um, so yeah, Todd Brunson card. I really don't have any stories about Todd Brunson. This is kind of brutal. Let's talk about Jennifer Harmon. I don't know much about Jennifer Harmon either. Apparently, just a story. She owned all the houses where her and Dale Negrandu and all the other high-stakes poker players live. She owned like basically every other house on the block. And by the time they were done, all of the high-stakes poker players lived on her block. 
Kathy Lieber, Kathy Lieber will get in there and battle with you. I don't know if you all know, but Kathy Lieber, for a while, was the absolute most feared female poker player and one of the most feared poker players in general. Back in the day when she was grinding hard, she would get in there and she would battle. These are fun cards. I don't even know what I'm rooting for. I wonder if there's a difference between the red ones and the blue ones. Who knows? Who knows? Jay Nandez PLO book just arrived. I'm glad to hear it. Do you know the average cost per hour of a poker coaching coach? I'm not sure what you mean. We did the math. If you sign up for a three-year membership, well, during when the Black Friday sale is going on, it would come out to like 50 cents a day. 50 cents a day divided by 24 hours is what? Um, can't even do math. Five divided by two. Two and a half cents an hour. Two and a half cents an hour. Two and a half cents an hour you get charged. You care about poker enough to pay two and a half cents per hour to try to get good? Got any more packs of cards to open? I have a lot more pack of cards to open. The one-on-one -on -one private coaching. You can send us an email or go to the tool section and that is where you can apply for private coaching. You have very poor results playing Jack-10. Any thoughts on what you could do to get better? You probably have a small sample size. If you're playing online, you can often see what you're doing wrong. If you're playing Jack-10 offsuit from early positions, um, that's probably a problem, right? If you are maybe calling with it a lot from early positions, that could be wrong. If you're um, in the small blind, maybe you should be three betting it more. I don't know, man. You gotta, you gotta look at your database. Yeah, if you're limping, that's probably wrong. Did you stream yesterday's match? I was on the GG Poker stream. Go to youtube.com slash GG Poker. It was uh, match number 18. Go there, click like, let them know in the comments that you enjoyed it if you did. I would appreciate that. Are you friends with Tom Duan? I used to see Tom a lot, but then he went to China. I didn't really, haven't really seen him since. So I know roughly the cost of coaches at poker coaching. They range from 100 bucks an hour to 500 bucks an hour, roughly, for private coaching. That said, yeah. If you are new-ish to poker, first things first, you don't necessarily even need to be spending money to get good. Check out pokercoaching.com slash free and pokercoaching.com slash fundamentals. Go there. All of those resources are free. Next, um, I would tell you to sign up for a one-month membership. Go through, binge the content. You'll learn a ton. Okay? Go through all of the content. At Poker Coaching Premium, we have a database of classes where you can basically search any topic you want. We have gigantic courses on specific games, so you can learn about that format of No Limit Hold'em, etc., right? And um, that said, if you don't mind spending money, of course, a private coach is going to be the best way to get up to speed as fast as possible. But assuming you asked me that question to begin with, what do they charge, it implies you're kind of price sensitive, which implies to me... I should give you advice for people who are price sensitive, right? Where are you living? New York City. What do you think about that hand where Doug had the seven eye flush and the ground had the king eye flush? I thought it was a weird bluff hand by Doug Polk. I maybe we'll run that one through the solver later. I think the king high call was just fine. On the river, to sum it up, it went bet from Polk, raised from Negranu, re-raised from Polk, just call with the king of diamonds from Negranu when the ace was on the board, but there was a three two flush available, three two straight flush available. The thing is, if it goes bet, raise, re-raise, all in on the river, is Polk really calling with worse? I don't know. I don't know. Can I tell you about the major giveaway we have coming? We have two giveaways coming out. One is only for poker coaching members. If you're a poker coaching member, you're going to get access to a very sweet giveaway. About $5,000 worth of fun for poker coaching members coming up in the very near future so make sure you get in on that make sure if you're a poker coaching member you check your email um i guess i can say what we're doing we're giving away 10 five hundred dollar buy-in bank rolls we're gonna call them bank rolls i'm gonna become santa claus and dump a bunch of five hundred dollar bank rolls on the poker coaching member so if you're a poker coaching member get in there collect it then for everybody else we're giving away a seat to play with me and a bunch of other people on Poker After Dark. Next season, Poker After Dark starts in two days. I'm going to be in a bunch of the episodes. And they were nice enough to let me have 
a seat to give away in a future Poker After Dark game. So that is exciting. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Jonathan Little and get on the email list at PokerCoaching.com. James Romero in the chat. Good morning. Good morning. He's going to be on Poker After Dark coming up. Maybe it goes well for him. Maybe it doesn't. I guess we'll find out together. <laughs> Let's see. Are we commentating any more of the heads up rounds? I don't know if they asked me to. It's actually pretty bad timing specifically for me to coach or for, for me to commentate the heads up games between Negreanu and Polk because they start at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time and like my time to watch my kids is like 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. Because that's when we don't have our nanny. That's the time where they go to bed, etc. And they eat dinner. So it's really, really bad timing. So basically I have to ask my wife to watch the kids and, you know, you can do it, but you can't do it too often. So that's a spot where I can't do it all the time, but certainly every once in a while. You wanted the five hundred dollars from five from a few, from uh, two years ago. Yeah, we've been giving away a bunch of cash for quite a while. Santiago here in the chat says I gave away five hundred bucks to him a while back. Good, glad to hear it. Am I playing to Maine? I don't think so. So I'm in New York City. To get to New Jersey from where I'm from, it takes like an hour or an hour and a half, which I know sounds like not all that much time. But then I don't even think I have a World Series of Poker New Jersey account, so I'd have to make that. I know it takes multiple transfers to get $10,000 in there. Don't know if I want to go through that process. Although it's probably easy. I think you can just use PayPal when I have PayPal money. Um, I don't know. It's just like not worth it. Like what is your ROI in the $10,000 tournament anyway, right? And if it takes a day and a half on average, that means we've got to get a hotel room in New Jersey. So let's say we do have, I don't know, 25% ROI. It means we're going to make 2500 bucks on the deal. It takes me a day and a half to make 2500 bucks. We're going to have to buy, get a hotel room, got to travel multiple ways. Car there is going to take cost $100. Bucks. So that's $200 we got to spend there. $100, $150 for a hotel room. It's $350. So now we're making, um, call it $1,800 bucks for a day and a half. It's probably worth it in theory, right? And you could win the World Series main event. This is the year that's easiest to win. Easiest year to win the World Series main event in a very, very long time. You don't get nearly as much money, of course. So anyway, that's that. Joe said you liked my commentary last night. Well, thank you. If you enjoyed my commentary, head over to GG, well, youtube.com slash GG Poker. Click on number 18. Click like and uh, leave them a comment. Tell them that you liked it. If enough people say that, maybe I'll get to come back. World Series should be good content if you won, indeed. Why is this year easier to win than the others? Because there's way fewer people. You feel there's already been a main event winner this year. I think my feelings on this are irrelevant because I did not design the systems. I don't work for World Series of Poker or GG Poker, etc. Um, so, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, whatever they say, it is what it is. I felt like the first 5K was the main event, though. That's what they said it was. It turns out it wasn't. What site will the bankrolls be on? It's for poker coaching members only. If you're a poker coaching member, you will be notified. De Blas Zerjao cash in the main event. I'm not sure. I don't know. I know he was chip leader after day one. Blas is one of our students at Poker Coach, and he crushes it. Absolutely crushes it. Bubble question. Made a mistake. Let's see. Ace queen, 19 big blinds deep. You raised the two big blinds, got three bet to eight big blinds. You jammed and lost a king eight suited. Did you make the right play? Three or four players had fewer chips than you. I mean, it, that, this is a tough question I can't answer because there's not enough info. Or like how short are the other players, etc. But, um, I don't know, it's probably fine. Who knows? Depends on what you think about that 8-big blind re-raise. Is that 8-big blind re-raise going to call off, etc., etc.? You want a poker coaching coach you can relate to? Well, go to pokercoaching.com, watch the content, buy the coaches, find one that you like, find one that you relate to. If you're averaging $100 an hour on a 1-2 big blind, I guess that you're saying you're making $100 an hour at 1-2 no limit? Well, you're clearly running hot. Should you keep playing there or move up? Yeah, do whatever you want. Listen, the nice thing is, if you've played like 1,000 hours and you've made $100 per hour, what's 1,000 times 100? 100,000 bucks? So if you've made $100,000 playing 1-2 no limit, you can kind of do whatever you want, right? Of course, if you only played like six hours, 
then you only have $600, which means that you basically have no sample size. If you have no sample size, then you have no data, right? You think now is the time to invest in various casino stocks? I think my opinion on that is completely irrelevant. Um, I don't know how these things work. I don't really comprehend how casino stocks are not in the absolute dumpster right now because um, I went to Vegas recently and half of them are closed. Um, that said, it seems like America is going to keep printing money for a long period of time. So you probably want to put your money in hard assets and not dollars. It's up to me. But that said, I don't know. I don't know. What's the fifth agreement? I can't remember it off the top of my head. You can Google it. I'm sure you'll find it. Do I think GG signing Blitzarian was a good thing to do? Probably not. The thing is, is like, Blitzarian has a following of um, people who are very different than me, right? So I don't really relate to them. That said, I realize there's a whole group of other people in the world who are very different than me, right? And you want to attract them. So a great way to attract them is to hire their leader, right? So if you hire their leader, they're going to go want to play with their leader, especially if they think that that kind of thing is cool, right? And the neat thing about hiring that type of person is that the people who follow that type of person are often not very, um, let's just say good at poker. They're often not very good at poker. So do you want to play with people who are not very good at poker? Sure, answer is yes, right? However, do you also want to hire someone who um, assaults women and who seems to do very out of line things? Probably not, right? So look, whenever you're running any company, you always have to make trade-offs. Well, you don't always have to, but in theory, you do make trade-offs between what is quote unquote right and what is quote unquote good for the business, right? And I've always tried to err on the side of doing what is right in exchange for giving up money. And I think that's worked out pretty well in the long term. I, I would not have hired him. But that said, I'm sure it's a business decision they probably thought out. Tough to say. I don't know. That said, it's not my company. I don't know. They can do whatever they want. I think anyone who dedicates a lot of time and training can become a poker pro. What does a poker pro mean first off? Does that mean making 30K a year? Also, who is anyone? Literally anyone? No, not literally anyone. But, um, you know, if you're reasonably intelligent, if you actively apply yourself, put in eight hours a day every day for the next three years, like you would do if you went to college to get a degree in something, can you be a poker pro? Probably. Now, maybe not everyone. But again, not everyone, right? I think some people just don't have the right mindset in general to begin with. Which PC courses help understand range construction? There's all sorts of them, man. It's what most of poker is about. But um, check out stuff by Acevedo and Matt Affleck. They do a lot of um, GTO analysis, adjusting for player pool tendencies and whatnot. I think Bitcoin is something good to invest in and don't touch it and just let it fluctuate. I mean, look, this is a weird question. In theory, you want to be very diversified in general, right? Shots fired. We have no shots fired. I don't fire any shots. You ask my opinion. I give you my opinion. You can people can do whatever they want. You want to go through the four agreements real quick? We read these on the GG stream yesterday. It's a book Negrani turned me on to a long time ago. I'll read them to you. Number one, be impeccable with your word. Do what you say you're going to do. Don't be a liar. Don't cheat people. Don't steal from people, right? Do what you say you're going to do. Now, to be fair, if you say you're going to lie and cheat and steal, like, you know, some content creators out there, and you, then you do lie, cheat, and steal, then I guess it's okay. But if you say you're going to do the right thing, do the right thing. If you say you're going to be somewhere at a specific time, be there at the specific time. If you say you're going to... Show up and do the work, show up and do the work, right? You need to be impeccable with your word. That said, like, I understand things come up, people make mistakes, but um, you typically want to be seen as a reliable person, right? If you're not generally reliable, no one's going to want to work with you. Number two, don't take anything personally. You all may not know that because you're here watching me right now, but there are some people that don't like Jonathan Little. 
Why? I don't know. We'll get to that one in a minute. But you have to understand that you should not take things that other people do to you personally because very often you don't even know why they're doing the things they're doing. Quite often they don't know why they're doing what they're doing. There's some you know, evolutionary concept happening in their brain that's making them want to fight you for some reason, right? And why? They don't know. They're just doing it. They're living their life doing what they think is the best thing for them and you can't worry about it. Don't take anything personally. Next, don't make assumptions. Don't make assumptions about mainly other people and what they're doing, right? If someone cuts you off in traffic, don't make the assumption that they hate you and they want to try to make you crash. They were probably just trying to get where they wanted to go, right? Of course, they probably weren't being considerate, but that doesn't matter. Don't take it personally, right? Number four, always do your best. Show up, do your best. Don't slack off. Um, some people mentioned a game the other day, a tournament series that's known for people going there, playing small stakes, and goofing off with the idea of that's fun, right? Like in reality, is that your best? No, it's not your best. You're just goofing off and wasting your time. If you want to succeed at life, I think you need to spend a decent amount of your time doing the best that you possibly can. So anyway, be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Always do your best. What book is this? This is called The Four Agreements. The first 25 pages of this book are very, very hokey. Domestication and the Dream of the Planet. Look, I, I didn't get into all the hokey stuff, but starting on page 25 till roughly the end, last 10 or 15 pages can be skipped too. Um, very, very solid book. Good life advice. So that's that. What stakes tournaments do you need to play to make $30,000 a year? Mac, if you can't figure that out, you're probably not going to be a good tournament player. How many of those tournaments would you need to play at those stakes? Mac, if you can't answer that question, you're probably not going to be a very, very good tournament player. Is that rude to say? Maybe a little bit. It's a math problem. Listen. All you need to do is you need to figure out what your return on investment is and then how many tournaments you need to play at that stake, right? This is very easy. I need a calculator. I'm going to solve this for you in half a second. Like literally, well, maybe three seconds. Let's see. Let's say we want to play $100 tournaments and we're going to have 30% ROI. That means we make $30 per tournament. Okay, $30,000 divided by $30 equals 1,000 tournaments per year. Is that right? Seems nice and right. $30,000 divided by $30 equals 1,000 tournaments a year. Okay? There you go. All you gotta do is play 1,000 tournaments a year, $30 or $100 buying with 30% ROI. Right? What do you want from me? It's pretty easy to do online, right? That said, that said, a lot of people won't have a 30% ROI. A lot of people won't want to put in volume. A lot of people are lazy. They're not going to do their best, et cetera, et cetera, right? Is that Doyle Brunson book worth a read? It's a storybook. I actually did, haven't read it in a long time. Let's see. Would you say that every dollar invested in poker training will return... Wait, what? You're saying will you make your money back from education? Listen, getting smarter is very useful if you will actually spend your time applying it. If you will not spend your time applying, it's not really worth much. For example, if someone teaches me, Jonathan Little, how to play basketball really well, it's not worth a whole lot, right? But if someone taught LeBron James how to play basketball, that's worth however many hundreds of millions of dollars it's worth, right? If you are going to spend money to get good at anything, if you're not going to actually do it and actually apply yourself, it's not worth it, okay? So that, that's, that's a personal question to some extent. Are you actually going to go and play poker? If you go from, let's say, breaking even at poker to winning at 15% ROI in a poker tournament, relatively small ROI, and you're going to invest, let's say, $10,000 per year, that was worth $1,500 on average, right? Person who asked, by the way, how many tournaments you got to play to make 30 k Well, understand, there's going to be infinite variance, right? Louis Philippe here, good morning. Louis Philippe runs the Poker Coaching Study Group. That'll be happening as soon as we're done with this show at 10 a.m. Where can you go to learn to read range charts? Check out Michael Acevedo's content at PokerCoaching.com. Mark's asked me a bunch of questions about things I don't know about pertaining to Poker After Dark. I don't know their seasons. And I don't know their, their... I don't know what they're doing. I'll give you a little spoiler. I'm probably in almost every episode. There you go. 
Let's see. Is there a big difference between micro stakes and small stakes? I don't know. I mean, like, probably. Can I tell you more about the study group? I can do you a little bit better than that. Go to pokercoaching.com, click on the community tab, get in the Discord, go to the study group tab, and get in it at 10 a.m. today. Get in there and experience it. Don't need me to tell you about it. Get in there and do it. Do you play high stakes poker? I've never played on the TV show High Stakes Poker. Louis Philippe said he has 60% ROI, played all night. Good job, good work. Study group is great. I'm glad to hear it. When you open 7 6 2 to playing six handed, is it profitable to call a three bet out of position or in position? Depends on the size, right? Let's see. How do you play online poker? You download a poker software and you deposit money into it. You have to have a lot of under... Whenever you sign up at pokercoaching.com, we definitely do have a beginner course. It's completely for free. Uh, Tina, you don't need to pay any money to get beginner content. That's not what we're trying to accomplish here. Go to pokercoaching.com slash fundamentals. It's a completely free course that will get you up to speed. If you go through that you will be up to speed and you can make use of the content at pokercoaching.com. Let's see. Do I plan on streaming Sunday sessions anytime soon? Not really. I have my reasons. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Why don't, why don't our charts discuss when you get three bet? Because it depends on the sizing. It depends on the rake. Often it's very, very intuitive. We discuss how to figure out what your defending range should be. You have to understand, if you make the blunder of downloading a chart and then blindly following it all the time, not accounting for sizing, not accounting for position, etc., you're just going to get demolished, absolutely demolished. If you think you're going to download some simple preflop charts and follow them and crush the game, you're lying to yourself. Where's the Discord study group? There should be a literal channel called study group. When's the next webinar with Tommy Angelo? I don't know. Sometime soon. Actually, maybe not. Maybe in a month or two. Tommy's very busy. He made a special webinar for the Poker Coaching members a few weeks ago. I think he's, supposed to, he's currently scheduled to make a webinar for us every two or three months, I think. Something like that. Are there sit-and-go charts? Another, well, it's a question. It's not necessarily a good one. Think about why you have a difficult time making sit-and-go charts. Why should you have a difficult time making sit-and-go charts? Everybody type it in the chat. Why would it be more difficult to make a sit-and-go chart than a cash game chart? Is it better to play lots of tournaments with low ROI and small fields or high ROI with massive fields? Depends on if you care about variance, right? High ROI with massive fields are going to lead to loads of variance. Maybe you care about that, maybe you don't. What's my favorite Battlegrounds hero? I am a little bit partial to that, uh, to, to Patches, even though Patches is bad. <laughs> um, patches is not, not particularly great, but I love the idea of being able to have infinite gold. When you get Patches, you basically get infinite gold at the end of the game if you run well. And you get the, the uh, five-star guy that gives you a gold every time you buy a pirate. Because you'll inevitably get a golden one of those and then another, gold, another one. So every time you buy a pirate, you get three gold. Buy a pirate, get three gold, sell the pirate. Buy another pirate, you got four gold, right? That's a lot of fun. I like going infinite. It's really fun to go infinite when you only have a minute or whatever it is to play. Is it called study sessions? Yes, it's called study sessions. There you go. You found it. Are more people calling stations online than live? Definitely. The reason you can't find simple charts for sit and goes is because there are payout implications. And when there are payout implications, your strategy is going to change substantially. You need to get a program like ICMizer. Check out jonathanlittlepoker.com slash ICM and look up ICMizer Jonathan Little on YouTube. It'll come right up of me showing you how to use it. You're going to need a program like that to develop good, fundamentally sound ranges for games with substantial payout implications. What am I drinking today? This is matcha green tea. Yeah, this is actually from a company called Fat Fuel, which Matt Affleck turned me on to. Basically, it's green tea. Well, it's matcha tea with um, MCT oil and whatnot in it. Not sure what else I need to say about it. 
<laughs> it's a real experience. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Looking back to what I studied a long time ago, how much has the game changed? Substantially. Do I miss ACR? Absolutely not. The days of me sitting there being tilted because the program doesn't function properly are over. <laughs> Turns out, if you play on sites that, um, well, that are impeccable with their word, then you don't really have to worry about the site not functioning properly. Did I say CBD oil? I think I said MCT oil. Could be wrong, though. I don't know what I said. Let's see. But no, back whenever I was learning poker, there were, like, no really good tools. There was this program called Sit and Go Power Tools back in the day, and you had to run every individual hand. Now you just, like, load them into ICMIs, and it runs all the hands in, like, six seconds. It saves you infinite time. You can get way better, way faster today than I could back in the day. How much of a threat are AI and solvers to online poker? Some? Some of a threat? <sighs> Let's see. Nathaniel, I would recommend you get in the webinars with um, Matt Affleck and ask him this. Matt Affleck will be able to give you hands-on advice to help you get out of your rut and continue studying. Everybody wants to know. Everybody loves drama. Look, everybody. Don't be offended by the things that people do. If you get offended because they had a re-entry World Series main event, now they have a freeze-out World Series main event, like, who cares? Understand, well, this might not sound good for the WSOP brand, but, like, does anybody really care about World Series poker bracelets anymore? I mean, there's so many of them at this point. You can get them from winning random $50 buy-in online tournaments, which is fine. I have no problem with it. But, like, you got to realize, whenever they print a lot of something, it gets devalued. Like U.S. dollars, right? You print enough U.S. dollars, it gets devalued. You print enough World Series bracelets, they get devalued. It's okay. It's okay. What do I think about it? I mean, I guess that's what I think about it. If you print them enough, they get devalued. That said, they've done a great A-plus job of promoting them, of making them um, seem prestigious, right? Let me show you all something. Back in the day, take a look at this. This is a solid gold bracelet from Bellagio. You see it? This is from the 2009 spadeclub.com tournament. This bracelet is um, 22 karat gold. Retail value, $5,000 or so, maybe a little bit more. Um, I won this for winning something like a 600 or 700 person tournament at Bellagio. Okay? During the summer, same time as the World Series, six or seven hundred people. About as many people as the No Limit Hold'em tournaments that the Rio had back then. And nobody cares. Nobody cares. Why does nobody care? Marketing. Promotion. Publicity. Nobody cares. Is that one, one of the ones that your kids throws on the ground? No, these are over here. I have, I have a few junkier ones that the kids can throw on the ground if they want. Um, but no, they don't get to throw around the gold one. Did I get to play the Vintage Cube? I played the Vintage Cube one time this year. Would you ever sell that Jonathan for money? Would I sell me for money? I don't want to sell this Jonathan. I'm going to keep me. Um, I mean, look, luckily I'm in a spot where I don't think I'm going to need money anytime soon. But if I needed money, yes, would I rather sell that bracelet up there that nobody cares about, or would I rather sell um, my computer? I'd rather sell that bracelet nobody cares about than my computer. Jonathan explaining his stoicism then immediately asked for a hot take. Yeah, exactly. Would I recommend Negranu's Masterclass? I think it's relatively basic, but I think it's a good introduction for beginning and intermediate poker players. I don't think they were trying to make like some super advanced course there, right? You played a bunch on the Poker 2 app for real money. Well, don't do that. First mistake you got there. Stop playing on apps for real money. You want to know how to torch your money? Play on apps that are unlicensed, unregulated, run by a bag man, etc. Is that simple enough? Jimmy Boy says, you love me on High Stakes Feud. Glad to hear it. If you enjoyed me on High Stakes Feud yesterday, 
go to youtube.com slash ggpoker, click on number 18, and let them know that you liked me. New poker coaching member. Do I have a blog, guide, etc. regarding rake? And when to not play adjust to different rake structures? Um, I don't know. Send me an email, support at pokercoaching.com. And if if we uh, do, we will get it to you. I mean, tell me the rake you're playing in. If it's gigantic, you're probably not going to be profitable. I don't know. Explain it. I'll, I'll, I'll answer it right here. Should Negron do the second half of the challenge? Should and would will are different things. What should he do? He should not have played to begin with, in my opinion. That said, I'm sure he has his reasons, right? So, um, I definitely think it would look pretty bad if he quit. So, at this point, should he? Yeah, he probably should not have played to begin with. To be fair, look, Doug Polk is a master at taking words out of context and misconstruing them to trick his fans. His fans are incredibly gullible and incredibly, um, I don't know, is lemming like the right word? I'm not trying to offend him. Please, I'm not trying to offend the, the followers of Doug Polk. Um, he is the supreme leader, Kylo Ren, after all. You all know Kylo Ren. Never won a battle, cries a lot, couldn't beat anybody. You know, that Kylo Ren. Um, anyway, he does a good job of getting under people's skin. And to be fair, I tried to ask Negranu this yesterday, but I don't think he got what I was going for. I said, Negranu, are you breaking any of the four agreements? And um, the second one is don't take anything personally. You got to not take Doug Polk and the other haters on the internet personally. If you care what the random haters on the internet say about you, you're just going to end up getting dragged down into nonsense, right? And if you get dragged down into nonsense, then you're going to end up wasting your time making bad decisions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think it was a, probably a bad decision to play this game. Unless, of course, like GG said, sure, go play it. We'll pay all the money. Like, I don't know what the deal is, right? I mean, it depends on the scenario. So anyway, that's that. I have an autistic thing for marketing. I really don't have an autistic thing for marketing. I do like letting all of you know ways that I can help you. And if I've already made something that can help you all immensely, I'm happy to tell you. It is my responsibility to try to help all of you to the best of my ability. And if that means trying to get you to do something that's good for you, like study or read or learn, I'm going to try to help you out, right? Love my humor. I do my best. Let's see. You think it's Daniel's money or is he being sponsored? I don't know. It's probably his money, but I don't know. I don't know anything about that. Like, I mean, that was just a hypothetical thing, right? Like, imagine you get free rolled for the thing. Basically, they're giving you 200, 300K, something like that. They're going to give you 200 or 300K to play heads up poker against the dude on the internet for a while, sure. Jose, I'm glad I enjoyed the stream. Are there odds if he quits? I highly doubt he's going to quit. He said he's not going to quit. Four agreements again. Negranu is number one, impeccable with his word. One thing Negranu does a really good job of is he says he's going to do something he doesn't. Be impeccable with your word. Don't be a liar. Daniel said he's going to play the thing. So he's going to play the thing. I have, I have little to no doubt. You can come back and clip this whenever he quits immediately tomorrow. <laughs> but anyway, that's that. Yajail is altruistic, not autistic. Actually, I have a brother with autism, and um, look, I, I think I'm relatively normal. I think I'm capable of seeing what autism is, given my brother has a mild form of it. I, I don't really think I have any of those problems. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily a problem. It's probably a superpower to some extent. Maybe I do a little bit, but maybe we're harnessing it well. Who knows? I don't know. I feel fine in my brain, and I think it functions well enough. goes faster than most people's. jumps around a little bit more than most people's. doctor says I have severe ADD, but I learned how to channel it into productive activities to the best of my ability. Do miss playing cash games for a living? Oh, those were the easy days. Those were definitely the easy days. You show up to Bellagio at noon, play some cards for about 12 hours. Go home, make a bunch, make a thousand bucks. <laughs> I mean, we'll go over there, play, make a thousand bucks, go home, right? What more do you want out of life? Those were, those were the easy days. But no, I mean, now, now we're doing the business. We won't need to be home with my wife and kids, et cetera, et cetera. If you have a six game bankroll, would you recommend 50 to 100 no limit online, which will be reg heavy or one two live? Um, definitely one two live. But you're under rolled. So the nice thing about live is that presumably if you're good, I don't know how you got the 6K. If it was gifted to you, that's very different than if you want it playing poker. If you want it playing poker, 
then presumably you're decent, right? If you won 6K playing poker, slowly by grinding up in cash games, because that's what you're looking to play anyway, I would definitely say you probably are properly rolled for 1-2 live. Check out jonathanlawpoker.com slash bankroll. Whenever you have a giant win rate, you essentially... Um, you, don't, you don't need all that many buy-ins. Like 20, 25 buy-ins is probably all you actually need. And you can always move down if necessary. Can you read the four-hour work week? Not right now. We're in the middle of the show, and the show's going to end very soon. Don't have enough time to read a whole book to you all right now. If you'll want me to read an entire book to you next time, let me know. Any tips for micro stakes online cash games? Play good fundamentally sound poker and adjust accordingly. How do you improve past the fundamentals if you don't have any good games to play and you're under 18? Find games to play. I'm sure you can be creative. Let's see, let's see. What would be considered a goal for ROI over the course of a set number of tournaments? It depends on the games you're playing, Andy. For example, if you're playing high roller tournaments, then your ROI is going to be very, very low, right? If you're playing $5 buy-in giant field tournaments, your ROI is going to be 100% or more, right? So this is not a great question because it depends entirely on what you're playing. What's the most soft format of online games in general? Tournaments are pretty soft. I got to imagine some of these like random... Um, Random like mixed games are pretty soft, but you're probably not gonna be able to actually play the high stakes, so it probably isn't worth studying it. Turns out if people play something for small amounts of money, then nobody really cares that much, which makes the game soft, right? Do we have any good videos on poker coaching about defense frequency? Yeah, a whole lot of them. Send us an email. Let's see. Can I explain cross booking? Cross booking is where Let's let's say the, the Doug Polk down Negreanu match is happening. You could cross book with either me or Doug Polk against his results against Daniel Negreanu. So if, let's say Negreanu loses 100k. That means Doug Polk won 100k, right? If you were betting on Negreanu, you were cross booking, then you would also lose 100k. Now you can cross book at like X percent. So let's say you want to cross book at five percent, right? So say Negreanu loses 100k, you lose five percent of that, which is 5k. Or you could do like 0.01%, right? It'd be whatever, 10 bucks. So that's what crossbooking is. Basically, you're betting on the results of somebody else's match. Sometimes you can crossbook with odds, like 1.2 to 1, something like that. You can do all sorts of stuff with crossbooking. Do I think Negron and Polk are playing for real money? Yes. I do think Negron and Polk are playing for real money. Can we learn playing small stakes poker given the rake is 10 big blinds per 100? Probably more than 10 big blinds per 100. I think. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know how much the rake actually is. Can, can, you, can you win in those games, though? Yeah, probably. As the rake is big, you should be playing tight. You enjoy the Poker Coaching Podcast. Glad to hear it. Thank you very much. All right, I have to get going. I have a business call. I'm trying to figure out translation and transcription of poker content into other languages. Easier said than done if you wanted to do it well. Everyone keeps asking me to hypothesize about things. There's no way I can possibly know. I'm not best friends with Negreanu or Polk. I don't know what they're doing with their finances. I hate to break it to you. How should you manage a study group? Ask Louis Philippe. Louis Philippe has a study group happening in nine minutes in the Poker Coaching Discord. Go to pokercoaching.com, click in the community tab. Get in the Discord, and then go to the Study Sessions tab, right? Go there, do that, get in that, see what Louis Fleet does. He is crushing it. So definitely make sure you all do that. Hope you all have a great day. Hope you enjoy your time. We only have one life to live. Well, as far as we know, as far as I know at least. So you might as well make the most of it. Get in there, learn something, study something, improve your skills. If you enjoyed today, click like, click subscribe. If you're not a Poker Coaching member, get your free trial at pokercoaching.com slash free. What else? Click the like and subscribe button. You all know that. I already said that. I don't know. Show your love. Show your love. Would you ever consider sponsorship? What does that even mean? If I like a company, I'm happy to let them pay me. If I don't like a company, then no. Many of the American sites have approached me 
to be sponsored by them. And I always say no. Why? Because I do not want to deceive any of you and lead you down a road of nonsense. Because the vast majority of the sites that operate illegally in America have closed at one point or another. Some of them have paid back players, some of them have not. You don't know how it's going to go down. You may think you do, but you don't. And I would hate to entice all of you to deposit money on a site that takes all of your money. It's not what we're going for here. We are trying to help you improve your skills, and even if they're going to be paying me to promote some site, we're not trying to get paid a little bit of money here to get all of you to give your money to some poker site that's breaking the law. So, unfortunately, due to me being American, those are the ones that are coming knocking at the moment. Maybe times will change in the future and we can uh, get a deal with a good, licensed, legal, regulated site. But, I learned a long time ago, don't depend on someone to give you a handout. Get out there, make your own way, add value to other people, and you will be rewarded. Right? Don't ask for a handout, don't expect a handout, don't want a handout. Add value. If you add value to lots of people, they're going to be happy to help you out in return. If you don't add value, though, it's where you start running into trouble. Do I play Baccarat? I don't know if I've ever played Baccarat at the casino. All right, I got to go. Enjoy yourselves. Have fun. Good luck in your games. What's today? Friday? Is today Friday already? Wow, time flies. I will be back. When will I be back? Monday morning, bright and early, 9 a.m. Eastern time, as far as I know. I would look at my phone. We have Instagram on here. Um, again, if you liked my stream yesterday, go there in the comments. Let them know you like it. Click subscribe or click like to, on the youtube.com slash ggpoker. That would be appreciated. Is there any chance of U.S. or poker being legal nationwide in America? Not tomorrow. Eventually, sure. Have fun. Enjoy yourselves. Have a great weekend. Make the most of it. Bye-bye. Thanks for being here.